Beth Jezos is the firebrand founder of Effective Accelerationism, or EAC, a fast-growing, physics-worshipping brand of techno-optimism that has taken Silicon Valley by storm. Beth co-founded EAC in 2022, and by 2023, he had grown his new account to 50,000 followers, attracted Silicon Valley royalty like Gary Tan and Mark Andreessen to his cause, and was mentioned by the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. Given that remarkably fast rise and the fact that Yak is literally a Twitter meme, you might be forgiven for thinking that Bef is all talk. But then you realize that Guillaume Verdun, the man behind the Bef account, has actually pioneered multiple subfields in quantum computing. And he worked at Google's secretive sandbox initiative alongside Google co-founder Sergey Brin. Is it possible that Bef talks the talk, but Guillaume actually walks the walk? Now, I'm lucky enough to run in the same hard tech circles as Guillaume. We've been in the same Twitter spaces. I called him while I was writing this piece. I talked to his co-founders and the people that he founded EAC with. And all of those people combined have one thing to say, which is that Guillaume is EAC. It's not a show, it's his life philosophy. So if you want to understand EAC and this movement that has taken Silicon Valley by storm, you should first understand Guillaume. Here's how Guillaume Verdon became Beth Jesus. Guillaume grew up in Montreal, Canada. He played football and he did theater like any other kid, but his heroes weren't NFL players or Broadway stars, but physicists. Richard Feynman, Leonard Susskind, Stephen Hawking. If Guillaume could wish upon a star, he would wish for the one theory of everything, a coherent idea that would unite the entire physical universe. The search for such a theory led Guillaume to McGill University, where he did his undergrad, and then Waterloo, where he did his graduate degrees. He calls Waterloo his mecca because it has the highest density of quantum researchers anywhere on planet Earth. In his studies, Guillaume did his best to push physics to the limit. He studied black holes where space-time is warped and information is ruthlessly compressed. Quantum teleportation, where entangled particles relay information faster than the speed of light, and quantum computing. But no matter where Guillaume looked, he found that writing things down on a whiteboard could only take him so far. No matter where he went in theoretical physics, he wasn't finding that one unified theory of everything. And he started to wonder whether it was something that was wrong with his brain if he just couldn't understand it, or whether it was something wrong with the human brain if there was just too much complexity in the entire universe. But then, inspiration struck, and it actually found him in the gym. Guillaume was bench pressing, as you do as a theoretical physicist, and he was bench pressing 315 pounds. It's so heavy that he needed to find a spot, and the person that he went to ask him for help was Michael Broughton, a brilliant computer scientist that he ended up founding a company. The two became quick friends and talked about Michael's field of computer science, and Guillaume, with his naturally integrated brain, realized that there's a parallel between the compression that happens in a black hole and the compression that happens in computer science with deep learning. This year, 2016, was the year that AlphaGo beat Lee Sedol in Go, a landmark event for AI in general, but deep learning in particular. These machine learning algorithms take in vast amounts of data and compress them down to a startlingly simple set of weights that determine how those layers interact with each other in the model. So Guillaume took what he knew really well, quantum computing and theoretical physics, and married it with his new discipline of computer science and deep learning, something that he literally knew nothing about at the time. This sort of cross-disciplinary thinking is super common for Guillaume. His second startup he founded with a mechanical engineer. During 2021 and 2022, during the crypto craze, he created NFTs with a quantum computer and sold them to make some money to buy GPUs. And then his third startup, the one that he's doing right now, is a totally different discipline. It has nothing to do with quantum computing. It's out of equilibrium thermodynamics-based computing. Guillaume is just an integrator. He's a person who can look at all these different disciplines and understand a lot of them deeply and combine them in really useful novel ways. That is a core feature of EAC. EAC at its core is just permissionless innovation, but the way that it gets there is through all these other disciplines. If you look at the white paper, you'll see math and physics and philosophy and economics and biology and computer science. When Guillaume talks about EAC, he's talking about all those fields at once. A simple way to think about it is that Guillaume talks in superposition. But Guillaume didn't start by founding EAC as a grad student. He had a couple stops in the idea maze to go through first. Guillaume's first company, Everedian, was an attempt to pioneer the new field of quantum deep learning. They wrote a short white paper, and they even, in Guillaume's words, got to tune the multiversal symphony in that they were the first company to use the Rigetti quantum computer. Rigetti is one of the most famous quantum computing startups that has ever existed. But Everedian was unfortunately smashed in its infancy by pessimism, and it came from an astronaut of all people. You might recognize Chris Hadfield, the first Canadian to do a spacewalk and to command the International Space Station. He's also an investor in startups, and when Guillaume pitched him the idea of doing this quantum deep learning thing that no one had ever done before, Hadfield said, who are you to think you can do that? 
that was a huge blow and it effectively killed the young company. Guillaume at the time really wasn't anybody. He and his friends were just Canadian grad students. So other investors as well also thought that there was no way that these guys could pioneer a brand new field. Ever since then, Guillaume has made it his point and his mission to make sure that nobody else is hindered by pessimism of that kind. A central tenet of EAC is that nobody, not gatekeepers like regulators or pessimists, should be able to tell startups what they can and can't do. Only the free market should decide that. And to his credit, Guillaume has done a great job trying to be an optimistic supporter of other people that are trying to enter fields like this, like, for example, Deep Prasad. Deep is a couple years younger than Guillaume, and when he was an undergrad, he also somehow stumbled across the field of quantum deep learning. So Deep cold called the Institute for Quantum Computing at Waterloo, and the receptionist put him in touch with a 25-year-old Guillaume, and said that Guillaume was one of the six people in the world that were thinking about this kind of thing at the time. Apparently Deep was number seven. So Deep got his interview of Guillaume, and he interviewed him in this musty basement of a library. They had a good conversation and talked about quantum deep learning, which again, not a lot of people were thinking about at the time. After it was over and Deep walked out of the library, sauntering through the bookshelves, all of a sudden someone grabs him on the shoulder. And of course, it's Guillaume. Guillaume chased him down because he wanted to give an impassioned speech about why Deep should pursue this field further and go for it, even though he didn't think he could do it. Deep protested, but even after three months of saying, I can't do it, I can't do it, Guillaume eventually wore him down. And today, Deep has founded a quantum deep learning startup. That startup has now launched a satellite into space. They're going to use it to gather hyperspectral data that they need to test one of their new algorithms. And it's fair to say that without Guillaume's optimism, that might not have happened. Why did Guillaume help Deep? Well, the man is trying to accelerate tech development. And in his words, sometimes all you need is for someone to say that you can do it. But Guillaume still hadn't founded EAC. The foundation was there, but he still needed a little bit more time. After Guillaume got roasted by Chris Hadfield, he didn't just quit the startup idea altogether, he just quit society for a while and went off to go prove that astronaut wrong. Whenever Guillaume needs to do really deep work or settle a score with an astronaut, he goes into what he calls his Martian sleep schedule. Basically, he'll work for 16, 20, 24 hours at a time and then crash, and then work again and then crash again, and he just does this until the problem is solved. Only after that does he resynchronize with the actual, you know, Earth, human, sun. In this case, Guillaume spent about six months on Mars, and when he got back, he had a 100-page paper that basically proved that he was right, that his ideas about quantum deep learning and him as a person should be taken seriously. The rest of the world agreed. When he presented that paper at a conference, ironically a NASA conference later in 2018, there was a Google recruiter in the audience. That Google recruiter loved what they heard and actually invited Guillaume to take him and his friends inside Google to make this project happen. Guillaume, of course, said yes. This is a common theme in Guillaume's life. He has an incredible work ethic and a huge urgency to go get things done. In undergrad, Guillaume finished in only three years. That's while getting a double major in math and physics and while getting a 4.0, honors in both degrees, which is something that nobody at Waterloo had done in over 20 years. While at school, he often found himself the only person at the library late, late at night, except for his future co-founders. And still later, when he was founding EAC, he worked extremely hard. It seems like it's fun to go on Twitter and talk on spaces, but they were grinding. That was one to six hours a night, five nights a week for six months straight after work hours. EAC is not a passive movement, it's an active one. And that's something that Guillaume has enshrined in EAC through his own work ethic. But then, even after publishing that paper and getting invited to join Google, Guillaume was still not ready for EAC. He had to meet Google co-founder Sergey Brin first. Guillaume has often found himself alone, just him and his small team against the world. At EverEdigan, Guillaume was trying to create a brand new field. And even once he got pulled into the mothership of Google, he quickly found his way into a small, secretive side startup founded by Sergey Brin called Sandbox that would focus on quantum tech. When Guillaume started at Sandbox in 2020, Wired reported on it, but they didn't even know its name and they didn't even have any direct evidence of its existence. Business Insider got some more details in 2021, revealing that Sandbox was associated with a research scientist named Guillaume Verdun, <laughs> and one idea it was exploring was whether quantum calculations could read signals from the body like electrocardiograms. Completely coincidentally, Guillaume happened to file a patent for magnetoencephalography around this time. Suffice it to say that there were not a lot of other people thinking about quantum physics and magnetoencephalography at the time. Guillaume was, again, pretty much alone. Now, for most people, that would be scary. Most people are looking for some sort of social capital, and the best way to get it is to go where the people are, and then once you're there, to just plain old agree with them. But Guillaume is not like that. He's drawn to the unknown, not the known. Guillaume literally invented new subfields of quantum physics. 
things like quantum probabilistic machine learning, quantum machine perception, a quantum analog to digital converter, even invented a social movement, EAP. And his new startup is something fundamentally new. It's basically trying to invent a new paradigm of computation around thermodynamics, where it's not qubits and it's not bits, but it's a secret third thing. To go off by yourself, away from all of society, and to try to pioneer new fields requires bravery. And that is a core feature of both EAC and Guillaume Sly. Ultimately, Guillaume's worldview is EAC. He created it as a deliberate attempt to counteract the pessimism that he saw in the rest of the world. Guillaume created EAC alongside Bayslord, and they spent hundreds or thousands of hours honing their ideas and then publishing a white paper that showed them off to the world. Those ideas found a very receptive audience in Silicon Valley, first with HOF Capital, the first VC firm to invest in Extropic, and then with Amjad Massad, the founder of Replit, a billion dollar startup. Amjad helped introduce Guillaume to people in Silicon Valley, which eased his way as he moved from Canada to San Francisco, where he lives today. Silicon Valley has always been a home for both weirdos and optimistic builders, and Guillaume's unique optimism, which is founded on the laws of thermodynamics, anti-establishment, the faith in free markets, that found a home in Silicon Valley's existing ethos. So at the end of the day, EAC and Guillaume's optimism are made possible by four things. By integration, pulling together ideas and people no matter where they come from. By permissionless innovation, where anyone, regardless of their credentials, is recognized as having agency to bring about new technology urgency to move fast even in the face of opposition, and bravery to push boundaries forward even when there's no one else there with you. The way that I understand EAC is that it's a support structure for techno-optimists. It reminds people that they are not alone, which that alone has incredible mimetic power. EAC is just hyperstitious optimism. If you hang around EAC for even a day, you'll start hearing that word hyperstitious, which just means to talk something into existence. Both optimism and pessimism have a chance to be hyperstitious or to be self-fulfilling prophecies. Well, let me end with this. Guillaume and Iac would rather live in a world where optimism wins rather than pessimism. And who knows, maybe even understand those mysteries of the universe that started Guillaume on his journey back when he was a kid in Canada. Mm -hmm.